a good thing being part of Europe. <laughs> Matt. But this sort of like hostility leads to war. I mean, that's, that's what happened. That's how the Second World War happened, doesn't it? You know, it starts hostility. Off... Yes. Yeah, leading to war. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? Not... Are you going to repeat back it's... everything I'm thinking? It's not how it's the Second like... World War happened. It's it's the Second World War happened. <laughs> <laughs> but no. But what, what I'm what I'm saying is uh, is that we're, we're, it's not a question of war. We're not going to have a war against France at the moment. But, but, you know... That's what we said in 1939, darling, and then it all kicked off. Yeah, yeah, didn't yeah that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. France, it it wasn't... It, I think it was... <laughs> most, most historians <laughs> agree... He's trying! No, 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 no. We no. didn't fight France. <laughs> we're, so we're, so <laughs> we're, on, we're on their side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, we're well... Briefly, until they fucking gave up. But, um... No, yeah, but, no, but, but, I'm saying, but we're all supposed to be part of this big gang. We're all maybe we'll be a big country all together one yeah. day, and we'll all just be counties of it. Uh, but isn't that a, is that a is that a good idea? Will we all get richer doing that, having the same currency? But a that make it good. A so I'm disorganised thinking. And B or B is it that we hate each other's guts so much we'll never make it work? I'm saying this hate leads to hostility, which leads to war. Yes. One day. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, yes, I understand that. <laughs> what I'm saying is, and that could uh, lead us to invade so, so, France once again. So we didn't invade France. I know we didn't invade France, right? Hitler invaded France. I know that. Yeah. All oh, right. So, but, but it starts off. Yeah. It starts off with guys like with you making stupid comments about the French. And yeah. then we invade them, see? So you're <laughs> saying we should be in the European Union in yeah. order to, in, you know, because that's the way that we. People like me can't start the hostility and it can't lead to war and it will stop exactly. war. Exactly. That's a very are you, coherent are argument. You a Nazi? <laughs> no, I'm not a Nazi. Just wonder why you I just wondered. I'm just curious. I'm just Well, if I was a Nazi. Yeah. Because it, it is yeah. Well, about some well, I'm, you might I'm not, be I can in. I can satisfy your curiosity. Well, there we go. I'm exactly. not a Nazi. <laughs> just just, um, because, uh, just because someone's not massively left wing and slightly bitter does not mean that they are a Nazi. I'm not bitter! <laughs> And the fact he takes issue with everything I say, straight away Ian latched onto that. Yeah. yeah. Matt's right. taken issue with a lot of what Ian said. Yeah, oh, well. he defending me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm trying I'd... to distance myself slightly from you. <laughs> You're a little bit thicker than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> what do you think about Europe, Ruth? Well, I, I sort of think it's a geographical inevitability, really. That That's, what of That's what I said. That's what I said. I got nothing. Yeah, yeah, but I use more syllables. Uh. Jeez, no. <laughs> <laughs> I learnt French at school. I've never been to France to try it out, but so long as I only hang around people who are holding out pens saying "qu'est-ce que c'est," I should get along fine. <laughs> C'est un stylo, monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful language. <laughs> This brings us to the Fact You countdown of questions to ask yourself if you think you might be French. In at number five, when you see a beautiful woman, do you think, ah, if only she were hairy? <laughs> at number four, if you're sitting on a beautiful atoll, do you think, this would be a lovely place to explode a nuclear <laughs> test device? <laughs> at number three, when your wife asks if you have a mistress, do you reply, but of course. <laughs> And number two, have you ever tried a cheese and thought, mm, not bad, but it would be better as a stinking liquid? <laughs> and the number one question to ask yourself if you think you might be French is, you've just made a pop record, is it shit? <laughs> How would you get fat people to exercise? Paul, uh, one method would be motorised cakes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cakes uh, with a motor on it, you see. Uh, so uh, when a when a fat person goes to get the cake, because yeah. uh, it's radio controlled, and thin people operate the cake, so <laughs> it will go away and they have to chase it. Another way would be to um, to uh, you know like when uh, you there's horse uh, the uh, the, uh, the hunting of the foxes. Yeah. Well, not they don't do it anymore, but they, they used to, and they give the scent to the hound. Mm. Well, you do a similar thing with a fat person. You give them a scent of maybe like chocolate and biscuits, <laughs> and then you'd have a trail of the scent all going all over an obstacle course. <laughs> 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 all over it. I'm thinking along the same lines. I'm thinking mazes, like lab rats, you know, and you have a maze, and you, you have the food in the middle, and they have to go round it. That or cattle prods. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then at the end, um, when, when they found the food, you inject shampoo into their eyes to see 
if it's dangerous. Yeah. Mm, another method, <laughs> I've just thought of another method, would be uh, is to have um, treadmills at the queues at um, takeaway um, sort of fast food outlets. <laughs> so when they're queuing up, the treadmill's going back and they keep going along. Or another thing would be in the supermarket um, to have, when you have uh, cakes and fattening things like Battenberg and cakes and things like that, you have it very high up, but in order to reach it, they have to go on trampolines <laughs> and jump up, <laughs> get a cake, oh, got a bit of chocolate. But surely you should get them, we should get them to reform their attitudes to food and, and eat salad and generally get a grip, shouldn't I we? I think they just need to exercise more, because you're only fat if you don't exercise off the amount of food you eat. That's all it is. The fat slogan? people are just fat because they're, they're eating too much and they're not exercising Walk enough. Walk more, eat, eat less, less, you fat fuck. Yes. It's <laughs> as simple as that. That's the campaign the government needs to bring out yeah. and it'll work. Yeah. Simple. They'll be watching at home, crying into their food and they'll think, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. Yeah. What they could do to make sure that it's working is, you know there's that game called Buckaroo when you have to, sort of, you have to yeah. put all the things on the horse and it bucks? If they made all chairs like that, <laughs> or benches or anything, so if you sat down and you were too heavy, it would buck, you see. I find a really good thing, if, if you want to, you know, not eat too much, is I, I did this at home, I put a picture of a really fat person on the fridge and underneath it, I, I wrote, "Do you want to look like this?" Well, and that's really fat me going. They just put a mirror on there. Yeah. <laughs> do you really want to look like this? <laughs> oh, you do look like this. Feeling peckish. Fat. Yeah, <laughs> Have a cake. It'll all go away. <laughs> eat till you burst, you poor failure. I think people have got a right to eat and eat and eat until they burst. We're all worried about obesity, but you know, there's loads of food everywhere. People, food's lovely. People are finding other outlets. For their internet, they're not thinking of their careers. We obsess about our careers. We obsess about our relationships. We obsess about getting married and all this, and and, and doing well and having lovely houses. Well, there are some people who are saying, "I'm not going to obsess about those things. I'm going to obsess about one thing: cake." <laughs> I'm just going. To, I'm going to. I'm going to direct all my energy into eating and eating and eating. That's one thing I know I like. I'm, I'm focused. I'm more focused than the rest of society put together. The thin people, they're crazy, worried bastards well, compared tell to that, me. Well, tell that fat bastard not to sit next to me on a bus or on a plane then, cos I'm all cramped up like this. Stop eating pies. No, no, no. Give a bit of space to the skinny people in the world. <laughs> huh? You know, there people standing up for skinny people's rights, saying, oh, you know, they should have special rights and have vouchers in a shop to get a thing and do that <laughs> with the car. And you should. <laughs> I you lost it a bit towards the end. You don't, <laughs> it started well, off to well. be fair, you don't get people standing up for fat people's rights except for they me. Can't. me. <laughs> <laughs> Except for me, perversely now. You sound I mean. like the old man from the Werther's original ad. I've just realised. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a secret behind that. Oh Christ! <laughs> um, I stole his throat. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> and then used it in order to eat more cakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I think the people who are. It's, it is bad when you get someone who's sort of, you know, flowing over four or five seats. Uh, and that's very selfish. But in fact, those obese people aren't as single-minded as the people I was praising who wouldn't step out of the house at all. They've got a phone, a telly and a loo, and, th and they're living the dream. <laughs> and and, and, and what so you want to do is you want to see them running after cakes on wheels. Well, that's, that's cruel. It would be amazingly good spectator sport, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. yeah. Otherwise, we'll all end up like George IV. Mm. We don't want that. <laughs> yeah. George the Fourth was a real asshole, actually. <laughs> you two are so posh. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? Oh yes, we're so posh. We happen to know about some history from the nineteenth century. <laughs> How posh? Yeah. Well, yeah, posh. that's very Apparently, posh. It, it's, it's, it's posh to know about. He was king. He's quite yes, famous. He, he was it's George, a good George, job. George the Fourth. He was a king like 100, 200, uh, 500 years ago or something. Was would he Queen Elizabeth? If I told you he was the current king, would you believe me? <laughs> I, m I might do, yeah. <laughs> He's the current king. Oh, well, fair enough then. It's important Everyone that kids know, know about this sort of stuff. <laughs> So, are you sitting there with your third TV dinner on your fat lap, wondering if you might be a bit of a porker? Well, if so, here's the fat you countdown of questions you should ask yourself if you think you might be obese. <laughs> In at number five. In order to see your genitals, do you have to set up a system of mirrors? <laughs> at number four. Do those 15 steps to the fridge leave you wheezing like a stuck pig? <laughs> 
Uh, number three. At the beach, are you pestered by environmentalists <laughs> trying to roll you back into the sea? <laughs> At number two, does your doctor refer to your back as the north side? <laughs> and the number one question you should ask yourself if you think you might be obese is, do you talk a load of shit about your glands? <laughs> Wayne Rooney's fiance, Colleen McLaughlin, has been speaking about her love of fur boots. Rabbits get killed for food, so why waste the skins, she said. But is it okay to kill dumb animals for their skins? And if so, would Colleen object if someone skinned Wayne and made a lovely A-line skirt out of his neck? <laughs> <laughs> so my frequently asked question is, what's wrong with wearing fur? Matt. I'm against people wearing fur. Yeah, but, but you're pro-animal testing. Yeah. For medicine. Yes. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. See, um, I don't. I don't. <laughs> right. I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm anti-fur. Um, I'm anti-animal testing. I think if we, if, if we want drugs to be used on us, if we want to, you know, promote drugs, and, or not promote drugs, if we want to test drugs, then we should test them on ourselves. We're the ones using them. Don't bring the animals into it. What have they no, ever no, done? You, 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 but no, no, yes. No, 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 yes, absolutely. It's you can rubbish, test. No. no, it's not rubbish. You can test cosmetics on human skin, without, and you can test it on human fingernails. You can test drugs on humans. You do not... And anyway, no, no, when they tested AIDS drugs through. on monkeys... I have. When you they have. tested AIDS drugs on monkeys, they, they worked out what they did to monkeys. It doesn't work the same on humans, because we're not the same. But we but know that like, now, because we tested it on the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a process of elimination. It's like... Oh, Wait, hang on, he's just falling over the water. <laughs> I thought he was climbing over the table to... Yeah, it's oh, gin. Uh, it's straight gin. He's nicked your water. I don't know, that's like a complete that's... breach of etiquette. I, I took that out of a sailor's hip flask. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, no, but the, the thing is, though, you can't, if you test... All right, if you test... I don't believe in t testing cosmetics at all, because, no, you know... Wrong. Yeah. But, and also, we've tested enough. We know what, you know, we... we we tested lipstick on animals. You don't need to keep testing. That's cruel. Does lipstick still not hurt rabbits? Or Some of those you know. chimpanzees, though, with a bit of lipstick on. Yeah. Duh, well, come on. Yeah. I'm not saying, not saying animals shouldn't be made up to make them look sexy, but that's different. Hey. That's animals using cosmetics, not testing Sorry. them on them. But, but, but medical testing, you know, if I genuinely... What, what if a person died? You're testing things on the... It's much, much, infinitely worse if a person died testing a drug than if a mouse died. But the person died doing something for humanity, and if we... So were, did if, the mouse, and a person didn't die, the, the only a mouse has died. The mouse didn't ask to, to have that done to it. Mice it can't so ask Please, please, <laughs> please do Test it. the well, drugs on alone. prisoners, nonces, sex offenders, <laughs> and members Brilliant. of the Bay City Rollers. <laughs> <laughs> That's who you do it on. I, 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 I do really think this. I think, you know, we have this, this idea that animal life is worth less than our lives and it's all... I completely it's have that idea. It's <laughs> Why is it bollocks? Look at animals. They can't talk, they so? can't build cathedrals, they can't do TV shows with, unless they're sort of helped by Rolf Harris. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're crap compared to us. Now... Paul McCartney has spoken out against ill-treatment of animals, and with good reason. If his wife was a racehorse, she'd have been shot. <laughs> now, sunbeds, toothpaste, farm salmon, crisps, pylons, food dyes. And now something else gives you cancer, living in the countryside. According to new research, using mobiles in the country could make people four times more likely to be diagnosed with a tumour. Ah, the countryside. It stinks, it's full of mad cows and incest, and it makes bad things grow in your skull. Still, at least everyone there isn't a gun-toting madman. <laughs> so, if phone masks are so bad for our brains, wouldn't life be better without mobile phones? What do you think? You're in the countryside. You can never get reception on a mobile phone. Masks. So how? But then how are they getting tumours from there them? There aren't many masks in there, so they all have to be cranked up to cancer. <laughs> 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 I mean, They're practically <laughs> microwaving all the people in a five-mile radius. I you could you... actually cook a ready meal just by bringing it up and putting it in. <laughs> I mean, the thing about mobile phones is it's... They're brilliantly useful. They're like they're the one thing from Star Trek that's actually come true. Oh, no, We've got I nice did... communicators. And horrible. I get... It really gets me cross when, when people have 
uh, fascists about not being allowed to use them oh, that annoys in me. places like uh, trains. The, the trains are the most useful place to have a mobile phone, and you have people tutting, and you have to have these bloody quiet carriages. Now, the, and the only reason... Yeah, who, who would sit in a quiet carriage on a train because you didn't want to sit with two people to, earlier today, Paul Foot. It was me, because you... Yes. You're very unpleasant towards me. <laughs> Sorry, did you two have a row on the train down well, no, here that Matt, I didn't Matt know and, about? Matt and I went off to get a cup of tea. We were all sharing a table. We came back, he buggered yeah. off. We looked, oh, he's in the quiet, the quiet carriage, not uh, saying anything and being all quiet and sensible and grown up and stuff. Hmm? <laughs> right, you, just love, you well, performed voodoo on me. So, you loved it. <laughs> but, I don't think this has any place in public debate. <laughs> <laughs>